Welcome to The Imperfect Painter. I'm Rachel McCampbell and I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to paint a simple cloud using just a few colors. You'll be surprised how easy this is to do. So what sort of cloud should we paint today? There are so many to choose from. Cumulus, cirrus, nimbostrata, stratocumulus. Okay, to make it easy, let's just go with a cumulus cloud. They're pretty simple to paint. When you paint any three-dimensional shape with a light source on it, your shape will have a form determined by tones, varying from light to dark. If you've ever drawn a ball shape and shaded it with a pencil, it's the same idea but using color to achieve the same effect. You're using light and dark tones to create roundish forms. Cumulus clouds have many roundish forms within a main roundish shape. If you keep that in mind, this exercise will be really easy. But first things first, let's go tone the canvas. If you'll notice, skies are usually darker at the top and lighter as they go down at the bottom. So we're going to mimic that when we tone our canvas. These are my latex gloves that I literally use and reuse until they dissolve, thus the dirty gloves. <laughs> Today we're using a canvas panel by Dick Blick and they're very inexpensive, great for experimentation. They're not precious and you can just easily toss them if you don't like what you've done. I'm using golden heavy body acrylics today, titanium white and thalo blue red shade. I've got some water spritzer in case I need it. I've gone ahead and put my white and blue on some palette paper got a palette knife and of course my trusty paper towel. I want to clean things off and go ahead and mix the colors. I'm using the white and the blue about half and half. This is straight up acrylic, no water, no retarder, no additives of any sort. I've got some flat brushes ready to use and I have a water bottle over on the side to put my brushes in later. So go ahead and start in the middle with your middle tone. And because it's acrylic, you want to work pretty fast and just lay it down. I find the easiest way to blend colors is to just get down your middle tone and then put some white straight up there on the top and it'll mix in with the paint that's already on your brush and then blend. Super easy. Again, because it's acrylic, you've got to work pretty fast. If we were using open acrylics by Golden, they stay wet for about four hours, even as long as 24 hours, but that's not what I'm using right now. Then I put the thalo blue straight down on the bottom to give a lot of dark drama to the sky and blend that in. I want to blend it as best as I can, but I don't mind seeing striations because, you know, it's a painting. I don't want it to look like an airbrushed photo. I want it to have the artist's hand in it. The paint inevitably gets over the edges and gets goopy on the sides, so you'll want to pick up the panel and clean those edges off. Okay, we are back. After a couple of hours, our acrylic has dried, ready to take the oil. And checking our cloud reference again, I'm just looking at the cloud shapes and reminding you of the round within round shapes. Like little balls all put together, little cotton balls with some dark flat areas and, and dark shadowing as well. I've got my setup for oils. We have our cloud brushes, which are basically some old beat up filberts and other rounds and, and other brushes I've had for years that get worn out and but they're soft and they're perfect for this. I have my brush cleaner which is Gamsol and some extra Gamsol odorless mineral spirits that's to clean your brushes or to thin oil out, lots of things. This is the medium I'm using today which is Galkid Slow Dry. I'll talk about that a little bit later but it has Alkid in it which means it'll help dry the paint a little faster than without that. And this is another little extra pot I keep with just some clean medium in it. 
in case the other one gets dirty for any reason i like to have a fresh one right there my colors i'm using today are gamblin oil colors i've got titanium white phthalo blue and ivory black Got my palette knife and my trusty paper towel again. The first thing I'm going to do is mix the white and the phthalo again about half and half, just like I did for the acrylic base. And you can see how similar that is to the base color. You'll notice that different brands have a little bit of different shades of these same colors they're not all exactly alike and to keep this simple i'm just doing a few colors on here i just want to have a variation of the white to black with some shades of blue you could also do this painting using white with just raw umber or if you have a tube of Payne's gray that works well I'm picking up a little brush beat up, of course, and I'm not going to draw the cloud. I'm just going to start painting the cloud. Now I'm going to dip it in the medium, but I mean just the tiniest bit of medium. I'm even going to wipe that off on the palette because it's just, you just barely want it moist. I think that's where my students get into trouble is they, they put a lot of medium on their brush and then it turns into a soup just immediately. So I'm going to start with just the middle tone and start drawing in a cloud. I'm applying the paint very thinly and I want you to notice that the base below, the color below, shines through. So this is actually would make it another color on your board there just by having the base shine through and create its own shadows. So one approach to painting a cloud is to use very, very thin glazes working in a very translucent, transparent way by keeping everything very thin. And I could paint the whole cloud this way, but for my purposes today, I'm actually not going to do that. You can use your paper towel to wipe away some of the paint revealing that base color below which shines through that white creating those shadows i think the trick to painting clouds always is to use a very light hand be very gentle go slow wipe your paint off quite a bit keep your brush dry and use the dry brush technique as much as you can. Just very, very little paint works best, I think, until the very end, and then you can glob it on for texture and for fun. Using a paper towel is amazing. You can really paint quite a bit with a paper towel, letting it smear and lift and do its own thing. I'm getting a smaller brush here and going ahead and picking up some of the white whites. Now you get to see some contrast. The light source is coming from the left, if you recall. So we're going to remember that as the cloud turns and darkens, just like the ball that we discussed. So here we go. We're making small little round shapes within round shapes just like I was telling you. It's just a bunch of little cotton balls put together, basically. Now, as you add white, it will mix with the paint below and become dull again. So you just keep adding that to create your bright brights as you go on through the painting. Warning, painting clouds can be very relaxing and incredibly good for your health. <laughs> Sometimes I have to drink some coffee just so I don't fall asleep painting clouds. It just is so relaxing. Sometimes the texture in canvases shows through. I know that some people like that. I'm not much of a fan, so I like to 
blend the paint into the texture when I see that happening. Anything that takes you out of the dream, I don't think you should do that. Remembering the flatter areas on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and put in a very, very dark shade here. It's too dark, but I'm going to blend it in and it'll lighten up. Don't worry. So as we build our cloud, we want to always remember contrast, our lights, mediums, and darks. And the lights can't show up as bright as you'd like for them to without having some darks next to them. And that's how you start creating your forms. To prevent the painting from getting muddy, keep wiping the paint off onto a paper towel. I don't clean the brush. I don't want to get solvents on it. I just want to wipe the paint off so that I don't create mud. So one way to approach this is just to lay down the white pretty thickly. Wipe off your brush really well and just gently, ever so gently, smooth that around into circular shapes, creating where the light would fall. And that's how you get the subtle shaping of a cloud. Now the edges you'll notice of clouds have little tiny wispies and they wisp out into the sky and they're, they're usually in movement, so things are moving and changing. So you don't want a hard edge, you want a very soft, wispy edge. Just as no two clouds are ever the same, no cloud painting is going to be the same either. Every person is going to put their own personality into their cloud painting. It's like your handwriting. Your handwriting is unique to you and only you. And so the way you paint is uniquely you as well. And I hope you'll embrace that. I, I always enjoy noticing my students' voices, whatever their unique voice is, I encourage them to explore that. I don't want them to paint like me or anyone else. I want them to find what their handwriting is through art. I want the bottom of the cloud to be soft. I may take a fan brush, which is a sable brush. It's very, very soft. And just gently, ever so lightly, Blend those colors together. It is a cloud after all. They're very, very soft and fluffy. The only thing about a fan brush is that can sometimes have less control. So on a small painting like this where I'm trying to be pretty realistic, fan brush may not be my best choice for this, but I'll try it. I think a smaller dry brush would be best. Yeah, I can create those small, soft shapes that I want to have at the bottom of the cloud and create a smooth transition with the flatter part on the bottom. And here's one time where I might want to add a little medium to my brush. Again, tiny, barely dipping into it, wiping it on the palette paper and wiping it on my paper towel again. So there's barely any on there, but it's just enough to smooth that oil out and to soften it, create a really, really nice soft edge. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of not using medium in this exercise. You've seen me just barely touch a brush twice with it and that's more than enough. Oil paints have medium and binders which combine with the pigments to create the paint. But we add more medium to oils for a couple of reasons. It makes the oils even more supple and fluid and can help thin the pigment in a way that's perfect for glazing and translucency. It also helps give the surface of your painting a shine or glossy effect if that's what you want and it speeds up your drying time. Gamblin has many different types of mediums, too many to go into here. The thickest one that they have is called Galkid, then Galkid Light, and thirdly Galkid Slow Dry. They all have an alkid drying agent in them which increases the speed of your dry time, but they're all excellent products. I prefer the Galkid Slow Dry on my first or second layers, and then I move up to a thicker one, the Galkid Light, later. 
I take Galcad Light to Europe on my teaching trips because if the oil is applied thinly with this medium, it will be dry to the touch the next day, which is awesome when you're traveling. So I keep going back in and adding more whites and finding those areas where the sun might hit the tips of those clouds and then letting the light fall off on the other side. At this point, I'm not really following the reference at all. I'm just playing and exploring what I think might be an interesting shape. I want to remind you that it's often really a positive thing to let your paint sit there for a while and set up. Sometimes I'll leave for mm, two hours and come back and the oil has stiffened up enough to where it's still malleable but it moves in a slower way and it creates a different effect so you may want to try letting your oils set up and see how it is to paint them later now for this exercise i'm not doing that i'm just moving straight ahead and painting the whole time that you see here if things start to get muddy on you and you're getting frustrated that's a good time to just walk away let it sit there and rest and and then come back to it okay so I want to add a few wispies to the sky so I'm taking that medium tone and just barely putting some color up there like a distant cloud just forming back there I'll take a dry brush then and smooth that out you want the edges and everything to be very 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 soft and atmospheric that will give the impression that it's it's further away and we'll make a few more indications of distant clouds here I don't want this one cumulus to be out in the sky all by its little old self so I'm going to create a few friends here some little wispy clouds floating around nearby I'm going to pick up a flat brush very small flat brush and maybe get in here with some bolder shapes this is where my handwriting gets into the cloud. I, I want to have a few bolder shapes, bigger marks, a little more action. And while I have paint on my brush, I always like to try to use it somewhere else on the canvas, wherever I see fit. And once again, adding more dark tones to create that contrast again. I want the little cloud to have a little bit of drama to it. And to get that, it's usually through contrast. Even if I'm just painting a simple cloud, I like to think that there is a mood being created, some sort of feeling evoked. I talk a little bit more about this in the bonus material section when I share some of my cloud paintings. I have other cloud videos I'm working on right now, a sunset video and one on rain clouds, and so I want you to tune in for that. So now this is the part where I get in and finesse things a little bit I want to keep adding the highlights and softening the transitional points between dark medium and light I want to pick up a little light on the other side of the cloud where the Sun would be hitting back there but not as bright as the left side I always say that it doesn't matter what you paint. I mean, you could paint a coffee mug, whatever, a tree, whatever you want to paint, and your whole life will show up in that thing. And what do I mean by that? Well, just elements of your personality, of your thoughts, your prayers, your feelings, they are in every stroke of paint. Your energy is there, and it's really, really amazing when you start thinking about that and exploring art and then really looking at other art when you go to galleries and museums and wondering why did they choose that color and, and the way the brush moved in that moment and who is that person? Well, the paint does reveal quite a bit. And through this process of painting, even a simple cloud, I hope you'll experiment and explore who you are, what your handwriting is, do you like to be expressive? Do 
you want to do big bold shapes? Do you want to do small, soft, atmospheric shapes? Whatever you do, just be authentic to who you are. And your painting will resonate with people because of that. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you'll try this at home and see for yourself how simple it is to paint your own beautiful clouds. Also, if you like these videos, please click the like button, subscribe and share them with your friends. I'm passionate about teaching and love watching others explore their creativity through art. So keep painting and remember to embrace the imperfection of things because that's where the magic begins. Have fun with art. When I approach a cloud painting, I decide which type of cloud or sky that I want to depict. I consider what sort of mood I'd like to convey to the viewer. This determines which colors I'll choose and what style of brushwork I'll apply. Do I want my cloud painting to be soft and atmospheric or brushy and expressionistic? These are some of the essential questions I suggest you ask yourself before ever beginning a painting. With this painting, A Passionate Belief, I decided to use a primarily warm palette, so I mixed reds, yellows, white, and raw umber together. To achieve the glowing white tone of the sun behind the clouds, I used Gamblin's Warm White. By choosing the warm color palette, I knew it would evoke the mood I was going for. If I had chosen a blue palette, it would have been a completely different outcome. This was a commissioned piece for a client who wanted a very peaceful marsh scene. So I chose cool colors, yet with some warm tones emanating from the sun. The lone egret helps the viewer understand the sense of scale and vastness of the scene before them. In Wings of Dawn, I wanted to paint possibility, a road leading to somewhere yet discovered the chance of a wide open new day. I chose primarily warm tones, yet they contrast with the cool blue sky. In my painting Last Light, I wanted to create a melancholy feeling with the blue palette. When you paint on hard, smooth panels, it lends itself beautifully to finessing clouds and getting all the layering and subtlety you might want. In my painting, Remember This Place, I used a lot of glazes to get the shimmering green-gold effect. I love this time of day, just before dusk when the light is almost gone. I used the contrasting colors of purple and green shades to create the mood I was after. In Power and Beauty, my intention was to use warm tones to exemplify the active power of clouds, clouds of all types. The road again pulls the viewer in and begs the question, where are you headed in life? A summer day walking on a farm with a blue sky and quickly moving clouds is my idea of happiness. Subtle purple shades create warm shadows on a country road. A simple scene, a peaceful moment in time. In this painting, I wanted the clouds to be out of scale, much larger than normal to create an overwhelming, heavenly presence that the trees are in awe of, so moved that they sing. 
I kept a muted, almost monochromatic palette to create a sense of calmness and wonder. In this painting, Contemplating the Day, I chose to paint using a high contrast palette between the brightness of the sky and water set against the darks of the trees and land to denote a day's end and what comes with that. There's nothing quite like the grandeur of a fiery sunset, but in this case I was touched by the subtle, cool blue tones of the clouds, of the barely warm color of the sun's rays glowing from beneath. That was the time I chose to paint. Thank you so much for letting me share my work with you and my thoughts on painting clouds too. I appreciate your time so much. Blessings to you and I hope to see you soon. Keep painting. Come paint with me at a future class or workshop. To learn more about where I teach, please subscribe to my newsletter by going to my website and I'll send you an email about where I'll be teaching next. And thank you as always for your continual support of the arts.